welcome to Back to Basics with Crystal. So I'm in the kitchen today doing a little bit of canning and I thought I'd bring you guys along with me. We are smack dab in the middle of canning season and all of the produce around us right now is really fresh and really abundant. So now's the time that I like to use to restock our extended pantry shelves. The other day I was in the pantry and I noticed that I'm down to four quart jars of corn. So I decided it's time to restock the corn. Unfortunately, it's not from my garden this year. It's one of the very few things that's not from my garden this year. My corn was a big fat flop. Yeah, it happens. I went out, found some corn, and it's time to get it canned up. So before we go any further, I wanna put a little disclaimer out there. If you're new to canning, welcome. And I would strongly suggest if you haven't done so yet, go out and get yourself a canning guide. Um, the one I use is the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. This is a great guide to have. Uh, it's gonna give you uh, recipes, number one. Uh, number two, it's gonna talk about pressure canning versus water bathing, what you can and cannot water bath. It's gonna talk about your processing time based on altitude. Really, really a great guide to have. So I would strongly, strongly suggest if you don't have one yet, to go out and get um, a guideline just like this. Talks about safety. I do know that they have a newer edition. I don't have that edition, so um, I can't talk about it. I have this edition, this is the edition I have. So go out and get yourself any, any guide, any good, reliable guide. And most people I know that can use this as a guideline. So now that we got our disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about canning corn and kind of how I came to the way I can corn. Back in 2013 and 2014, somewhere in there, um, our local small town grocery store was having a huge sale on corn. I, I, I think it was something like 12 ears for a dollar, just this huge sale. And I decided I wanted to can corn for the very first time. Now, I had my ball cookbook, okay? I had my ball cookbook. And I saw the recipe in here, and it's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, but I wanted to kind of get other people's input. Um, you know, maybe I needed to add something else to it. Uh, maybe I needed to cook it. You know, other people that had more experience than me. I wanted to get their input. So I went to a group of ladies that I trust very much when it comes to canning, how they uh, can corn. And over half of them came back and told me that they prefer to blanch and freeze their corn rather than can it. Um, and I was like, wow. <laughs> Uh, the reason why is because uh, corn is kind of finicky, from what I hear, to can. Um, what I was told is that it goes sour, or it can go sour in the jar. Um, also, it can darken in color, be become very unsightly. Um, so that was the reason that they gave me. I wasn't satisfied with that reason. Why? Because it's in the Ball cookbook. Everybody else is doing it. Ball did it. <laughs> So I wasn't satisfied with that answer. So I went out and I looked through YouTube and I found that most people were following the ball cookbook guide. You know, they were following the recipe in here. Um, and then I started searching blogs and, and it was still the same thing, still the same information. Then I came across a YouTube video from a, a YouTuber uh, that either lives near a Amish community or lived near an Amish community um, or a Mennonite community. I'm not too sure. Anyway, she decided she was doing a big batch of corn, huge batch. And um, somebody had given her a little bag of, and what she called it was corn canning acid. And uh, she also talked about, because you know it could sour, this is the way the Amish did it. And I was like, ta-da, that's, that's what I need. That's what I need. Where do I get this stuff? I could not find it online. Couldn't find it online. Um, I couldn't, I don't live near an Amish community, so I can't go to an Amish store and buy it. So again, really, really stumped. Checked more videos, checked more blogs, and I finally found a blogger who saw the same video as I did and could only come up with using Fruit Fresh as the acid. Um, 
and she didn't give any instructions on how to use it, just that this would be the closest thing to um, the corn canning acid in the YouTube video. Didn't say that she had actually used this to, to can. So I was intrigued. So I decided I'm going to try to put a recipe together. So going off the guidelines off of this and kind of looking at what the other uh, YouTuber did as far as, you know, adding sugar, um, adding salt, water. I, I, you know, I kind of put this recipe together and mixed everything together just like she did. And success. It was fabulous. The corn was so good. It, it was fresh. I mean, it tasted just like I went and picked the corn, cooked it on the stove, and served it to my family. Um, it was phenomenal. Uh, just really, really good. But it was kind of a complicated process. <laughs> you know, you have to have this big, huge bowl and mixing in it. I decided that the next time I canned, I needed to make it a little bit simpler because I'm a simple kind of girl, you know? So I took kind of what I did and what I put into that big, huge bowl. And again, with the guidelines from this and the book um, as far as salt. And now I just add everything to each jar. For me, this has never failed. I've never had um, jars that look unsightly as far as, you know, um, they discolor. Um, I've never had a jar sour on me. My son loves corn and he will come home from school and grab a pint jar of corn and just open it and eat it just like that. He says it does not need anything else and that's A-OK -okay with me. Um, so let's get started. Let me show you guys how I do this. It is really, really simple and again, it's a little bit different than, everybody, than what everybody else does, but it's also going along with the guidelines here. So let's get to it. Okay, so I've already been working hard. I've already got several jars filled up and ready to go into the canner. I've got the canner, I just turned it on to kind of heat uh, the water up and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and you can see over here, I have got a whole bunch of corn cobs um, that, you know, they're just corn cobs. We're not gonna throw these away yet. I have something else and that'll be another video on how we're going to use these too. So we're not done with those. Um, so what I do is I have a bunt pan, really super simple, a bunt pan and a nice sharp knife. And I uh, take my already cleaned corn and you see I don't chop it all the way to the bottom here. I leave a little bit of stem on that and I just stick it inside the bunt pan and I just run my knife across. Just like that. And I turn it to me and it goes really, really quick. At least I think it goes really quick. My husband came in here earlier and he was like, don't you have some sort of tool to do that? And I'm like, no. and we're all done, just like that. It goes really, really, really fast. Let me grab my bowl. Okay, so we've got corn that I've already done. All right, perfect. Empty bunk pan. Now I'm just gonna take my hands, they're clean, and just kind of run them through here and just kind of break up the corn pieces. Just kind of break everything up as best I can. And this is a sweet corn. I have corn. I have canned sweet corn, and I have canned um, field corn. And uh, this, it, so this recipe works good on both of those. If you're seeing anything unsightly in here, then you want to pull it out. Maybe a kernel that doesn't look as pretty as nice. Um, pull it out. Unsightly kernels will just look bad in the jar. You don't want that. Okay. Let me go clean up my hands. I'll be right back. This is my corn, and we're going to push that aside. I've got the last two jars that I need to fill up right here, and so we're just going to start with this one, and this is super simple, y'all, super, super simple. Um, the other thing I want to say is, you know, if you don't get all the silk out of here, um, some people might 
not like that, I really, I don't think twice about it. I really don't. Um, and a pint jar is about two cups. And we're not going to pack it down. We're not going to uh, tamp the jar down like this. None of that. This is a very loose pack. This is all raw, very loose. And we want to fill it to right at about one inch headspace. Just like that. Okay? Here's one inch headspace right there. You kind of see. One inch headspace. So let's do the other jar real quick. That side. And couldn't be any it couldn't be any simpler, y'all. Couldn't be any simpler. Whoops, I overfilled that one. Um, you want to make sure that you're not overfilling your jars. That is really important. If you overfill, um, you can have a lot of siphon siphoning, um, which is where the liquid will actually leave the jar, and it's it's unsightly. It is still edible, but it's just it's not as pretty. Um, and the anything above the waterline in corn will. Um, discolor and you don't want that it just makes it not as pretty and people don't want to eat it the next step for these pint jars is the salt and in each pint jar we're going to be putting and this is per balls guidelines we're going to be putting a half inch half inch we're going to put a half teaspoon y'all half teaspoon of salt now i am using a pink himalayan sea salt you can use whatever salt you want you want to make sure that you're not using an iodized salt. Um, we don't want to use anything iodized in uh, canning. And now I'm using sugar. Now, this is probably optional. I saw it in the other video, and it's just something that I have repeated year after year. I'm going to be putting one teaspoon of sugar per jar. One teaspoon of sugar. Now, what am I using as far as sugar? Because it's not, look at it, it's not really white, right? I am using a raw organic cane sugar. It's not refined, um, and it, I don't think it's as sweet as regular refined sugar. Um, that's what we're putting into each jar. So it was half a teaspoon of salt. I used this pink sea salt. You could use any salt you want. Just make sure it's not iodized. Um, and then I also used one teaspoon of sugar. Again, you could use white. I'm using a raw organic cane sugar. Okay, so let's talk about our canning liquid. This is just hot water. And to this hot water, we are going to add eight teaspoons of fruit fresh. And it's just level teaspoons. So what the ratio is for every one cup of water, you want to use, and that was four, here's five, um, one teaspoon of uh, fruit fresh. And fruit fresh has absorbic acid, um, citric acid, it should be eight. And we just mix it up really, really well. I use my um, funnel, my canning funnel, for no other reason is that I, I'm sloppy sometimes <laughs> and I don't want to get liquid all over the outside of my jars. And remember we filled our um, jars with the raw corn, so this is a raw pack, and we did not tamp it down, we didn't press it down, but now I'm, I kind of want to burp this. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle the jar, and you can see, I don't know if you can tell, see as, as you can see the bubbles coming up, if you can tell. Um, it's just the air coming out, and we want to make sure we have a one inch headspace here. One inch headspace is going to be right here. We are really good, and if you see silk, corn silk, just pull them out. And that's it. I mean, it couldn't be, it, y'all, it couldn't be any simpler than that. I, I need to finish off this jar real quick, and then we'll show you with a fresh jar. And did you see that? I just totally spilled that. That's why I use a funnel.
Now remember, we don't want to overfill these jars. Um, overfilling could lead to siphoning. Siphoning could lead to dirty jars, unsightly goods on the inside, and we just don't want that. We don't want that. We've worked really hard on these. A lot of, lot of hard work. And I'm just gonna keep on filling, y'all. And then we'll get these into the canner. Okay, so I have everything filled up. The next step is just to wipe down. Now this is a, um, a towel that I've got some vinegar on and I'm just gonna wipe down the edge there. Just wipe them all down just like this. Make sure that there's no salt or sugar or uh, corn pieces. We don't want anything to interfere with our lids. Used to be, and when I say used to be, um, up to about a year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, you had to boil your lids. Now, we just wash them with uh, hot soapy water. I do add a little bit of bleach, about a capful per sink, per sink water. Um, the reason why we don't boil them anymore, uh, ball and uh, hair, uh, change their formula on their change this formula right here on this uh, rubber and if you boil them what happens is it um, it can make you have a bad seal it like um, cooks it away or something I, I'm not sure why but we no longer have to boil these anymore so just a good water soap and I use just a tiny bit of bleach and so now we're gonna put our we put our lids on now our rings go on and just like everything else in the canning world, it's just hand tight. We don't crank down on it like that. There is absolutely no reason to do that. What'll happen during the canning process is that, um, you know, you kind of want the movement. You don't want to crank it down too much. You want the uh, lid to actually move and it's going to be releasing um, air and things like that before it takes its seal. So you definitely don't want to crank it down. You want to give it enough um, space to move and do its thing. And so y'all, I'm just going to keep on prepping these, keep on cleaning these down. And I want to tell you again, um, the only thing I do as far as washing, uh, I don't sterilize my jars like I used to. Uh, again, it came out a year, two years ago. They said you'd really don't have to sterilize the jars anymore. A good uh, washing with hot soapy water. Again, I use about a cap full of bleach uh, per sink water. But it's totally up to you how you want to, it's your kitchen, your rules. I do know people that still put these in hot water and I think the water is not supposed to be above 170 degrees, but don't quote me on that 100%. I just don't do it anymore. They, uh, the professionals said it's not necessary since they changed up their formula. Um, these now, they give a guaranteed 18 months if you follow their guidelines. A guaranteed 18 months on seal. So I'm just gonna keep on cleaning and keep on litting these up until it's time to put them into the canner. I should probably add here that corn is a low acid food. 
meaning it has to be pressure canned. So I've already started heating the uh, pressure canner up. It's not necessary to do this. I go ahead and do this, would, uh, heat, kind of preheat it. It just makes the process go faster. So my canner is a 23 quart Presto pressure canner. Now I, I use this canner as a dual purpose. I'll water bath in it and I'll pressure can in it. But for corn, we have to pressure can. If we look inside, hopefully we can get over there. I see steam coming up. Okay, so if we look inside, you're going to see that I've already added uh, four quarts of water. And also there is a little plate at the bottom. Um, I always use that. It's to keep the jars from sitting directly on the heat source. Um, so that is my canner right there. Now, I also want to add, before anybody asks, the Presto pressure canner is approved for glass top canning. Um, that was really important when I first started canning to make sure I didn't ruin my stove. <laughs> so let me go ahead and start loading this thing up. Okay, so I have my bottom jars stacked in there. And like I said earlier, this canner will hold nine, yeah, nine <laughs> pint jars. But look, I got a bonus half pint jar in there. So you want to make sure that you're not, uh, you want to make sure that there's plenty of room for these jars to move around because during the canning process they will rattle and move and you want to make sure that you don't pack it so incredibly tight that they don't have room to move and you can see there's plenty of room for them to move around in here all the jars have plenty of room to move around so now we're going to fill this thing up completely to the top and we're going to achieve that by adding another layer and this is the same kind of uh, pan that's at the bottom of this canner. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so I'm just going to sit that on top and that'll just keep everything very um, secure. You don't want to stack jars on top of jars because you don't want things to fall down. Um, everything will start rocking and rolling in here and you just, you don't want that. So you've worked hard. Don't take any shortcuts. Buy an extra one of these. Okay y'all, there is my top layer and as you can see we've still got plenty of room. Everything can move around. Everything can move around. It's not packed so tight um, that things cannot move around. Um, so now you can see it's heating up. Let's go ahead and put the lid on this and start the process. Okay, y'all. So I've got the canner completely loaded and I've got the lid on. So now we're just going to wait for it to come up to pressure. I'll bring you guys back and I'll show you what to expect um, as we go through the process so you guys know what to expect. Basically now we need to time this out for 10 minutes. Let me tell you what happened while I'm going to time this out for 10 minutes. Okay, so this little plug right here, just a few seconds ago it was down. You didn't see it. So now that that plug has come up, um, we need this little uh, vent right here. I don't know if you can see, it's venting steam right now. So we need to vent that for a full 10 minutes before we put the weight on. So pressure canner came up to heat. This little uh, plug right here came up, and then now it's time to vent all of the steam out of here for a full 10 minutes before we put the weight on. So this has been venting for almost a full 10 minutes. Now the timer's just about to go off. There it is. And it is time to add our weight. And here's my weight right here. Now this is a 10 pound weight. You want to use the correct weight for your altitude. For my altitude, it's uh, 10 pounds. So now we wait for it to come up to pressure. All right, y'all. So you can see my uh, pressure gauge is right at 10 pounds. And my little weight is just dancing away there. So now we're going to um, time this out and let this process for 55 minutes. Now, like I said before, don't go to town. Don't go work in the garden. Don't go outside. Stay in your kitchen area. If you keep, keep an eye on this, if you need to adjust the heat temperature to keep it right at 10 pounds, you need to do that. If you lose pressure, you have to start the process all over again. So it's very, 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 very important that you stay in close proximity to this pressure canner. Um, I've already started the timer. Look back here. So now we have 54 minutes to go. 
So I'm gonna get the kitchen cleaned down. Okay, y'all, so just a few, uh, about a minute ago, the timer went off and I went ahead and turned the heat off and I moved the uh, pressure canner off the heat. Um, you can see my little gauge is really starting to slow down, or I'm, I'm sorry, my little weight is starting to slow down. It's not dancing as much anymore. The uh, pressure on the gauge is starting to slowly come down. Now, under no circumstances, no circumstances, do you want to pull that weight off that pressure canner right now? If you did that, what would happen is the pressure would drop too fast and you could break every single jar in your canner. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna let the pressure come down naturally. So after the gauge goes down to zero, okay? So once we have zero pressure, this little plug right here will go back down. Once it does that, then it is safe to take your weight off the pressure canner. What I do is after I see that, I usually time it out for about another 30 minutes and then I'll pull my weight off. And then I'll time it out again for another 30 minutes before I even open the canner because this thing is hot. It is hot, hot, hot. And there's times when I can and I, um, it's late at night or early in the morning and um, I take my canner off the, um, the heat, I'll leave it all night long and then the next morning I'll come and open the whole thing up. So it absolutely does not matter. The slower it goes down in temperature, the better off you are. So I will bring you guys back when I'm all done canning and uh, show you the results of what 49 ears of corn looks like in pint and half pint jars. Good morning, y'all. All right, so here are the results of our canning project yesterday. Um, we started with 48 ears of corn. Now last night with my salad, I did use a cup of uh, the corn that I had um, taken off the cob yesterday. So we uh, were one cup short of uh, you know the 48 ears, but that's okay. So our results are, we ended up with 21 pint jars of corn and eight half pint jars. Um, now you're probably wondering, why on earth I would can corn in such a little bitty jar? Well, the reason is, is over the last year, we have really been exploring different salads and really enjoying them. And these salads call for corn, for different beans, that sort of thing. And most of those recipes call for like a cup of corn. And I would have to open up an entire pint jar or a quart jar, whatever I had, and only take out a cup. And that just seems like a big waste. The rest of it would go in the fridge. 90% of the time, the remainder of the jar did get eaten. Um, but I would have to stay on everybody. Don't forget, eat the corn in the fridge, eat the corn in the fridge, eat the corn in the fridge. Um, so I decided that I'm going to can half pint jars of corn, which is only about a cup of corn, which is perfect for a salad. So um, that way I don't have to remind anybody to eat the corn out of the fridge. So this half pint is totally an experiment. Um, I'm gonna see how texture wise, um, you know, did, did you know, canning for that long of a period in such a small jar, did it change the texture? And I'll let you guys know later if I decide to continue to can more in the half pint jars. But I thought in the back of my head, it was just like, um, this is gonna make measuring things out so much easier. It's just gonna give me, um, you know, having different sizes of jars, it's just gonna give me more freedom when I'm cooking. The cut space, our jars are perfectly clean, perfectly clean. I don't have to worry about washing those down. Um, here's another jar that went in with the um, fuller, and you can see we've got the one inch head space again. You can see everything in there moves around nicely. Um, just beautiful, beautiful color. I mean, it just looks like fresh corn. Beautiful, beautiful. Here are our half pints. And as of right now, I can't tell any difference, um, you know, as far as if it's going to be mushy or anything like that. Just beautiful. It's got perfect head space. The jars are clean. This is why we don't over stuff our jars. That right there. That is the main reason right there. And all of the jars look like that. All of them. So how do we know if we got a good seal? How do we know if these jars sealed? Well, you would be able to walk up to them and push. And if they give you any kind of 
you know, kind of uh, making a popping noise or any kind of, you know, bouncing around, you know that that jar is not sealed. And my recommendation is to eat that jar immediately. Put it into the fridge, do not put it on your shelf, and eat it either today or tomorrow. That's what I would do, that's what we've done in the past. Luckily here, every single one of these jars sealed. Every single one of them. Every single one. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to let, we're gonna keep the rings. On. The other thing I wanted to show you is that sometimes when you pull them out of the canner, the rings, it's, it's kind of hard to tell, I know, but the rings are a little loose. Now, you, you know, you may be tempted to go and tighten them back up. Don't just leave it alone. Don't worry about it. But the rings can be a little loose, and that is just from the canning process. So I wanted to show you that, and you can't really tell. I can feel it. It's, it's not so loose that you can see it, but I can definitely feel it when I touch it. So for the next 24 hours, we're going to leave the rings on. We're going to leave the rings on, and we're just going to let everything cool down. Some of these jars are still warm to the touch. Um, we're, we're going to wait 24 hours, then we're going to pull the rings off and um, label them up um, and put them into our storage. And that is really and truly about it. Uh, canning corn is super easy. And it's something that I hope that you guys give a try. It's, it's really easy, it's not intimidating at all, and it's really quite delicious coming out of the jar, just straight right out of the jar. Okay, y'all, I told you that I'd show you a jar that um, I had left. Um, I've actually got four of these left, and I told you that I canned these last year. Well, I told you a lie. I actually canned these June of 2016, so these are just a little over two years old. Um, still has a perfect seal, still has a perfect seal, and color-wise, it still looks beautiful. Our liquids are still clear. Um, we have very little discoloration, and if you compare it to a jar that I just canned, so I can get this, there's almost no difference. This one is a little bit lighter, um, but it, that this could have been, and I can't remember, this could have been a, a white colored corn where this was um, a bicolored corn here. So it's really hard to say, but if you compare the two, I mean, you know, there's, there's hardly any difference in color. So let's open this jar up and um, no, it's not gonna go to waste. We're gonna open it up and then I'll turn the boy loose on it and this jar will be gone um, by the end of the day. He is my corn fanatic. So we're just gonna take the lid off. You wanna be careful not to damage your jar. I told you, it has a good seal. There we go. You hear that? There we go, there's the lid. Everything looks really good take some and put it in a bowl. Smell. It still smells yummy. It still smells like corn. Fresh, fresh, fresh corn. Okay. So texture wise, let's play with the texture. It's still extremely firm. Still very, very firm. I mean, this is, this is still really, really fresh. It's still really, really delicious. So, at, even after two years, let me show. It's, it's still extremely firm. It's not mushy, not at all. It's got a really nice texture, even after two years of being in the jar. I am doing a sample of the corn that I can, and it's got really great texture still, so I'm really uh, quite happy with it. This was white corn. Logan's going to try it out for us and let us know what he thinks, so go ahead, Logan. Is it good? You, you want to eat some more, or can I take it now? I'm going to eat more. Eat more? 